Jared Poland, Fronos, Photo. Com. We're here hanging out in Google Plus again with 10 people. We got Adam Lerner on the left, and I just want to go over some rules. I think, look for how you mute your your screens, everybody, be, uh, your audio, because what happens is when somebody's talking, it should switch to them, um, but if somebody's typing or coughing or getting yelled at, then it's gonna their video is going to switch. And uh, so right now, I guess everybody muted, didn't you? Shake your heads. Hey, all right. So what we're going to do, I did this last time. I like to do an intro, have everybody introduce themselves. Starting with the left, I'm going to uh, mute myself. So when Adam passes it on to... Oh, we just lost somebody. Uh, so when Adam passes it on to somebody else, then unmute your own audio and go from there. All right, Adam, you're up. Adam Lerner. Uh, I'm a photographer in Brooklyn, New York. An occasional Frono's photo contributor. All right, I guess it's mine. It's uh, getting choppy here. It's Bill in Texas and fine art photography when I get the chance. Sounds good, Bill. You again. <laughs> Brady Kennison, uh, Michigan. Uh, just a uh, kind of a basic photographer, just, just getting into it. Pretty fun. Watch you all the time, bro. Thank you. Next. I'm uh, Isaac Kittleson. I'm a college student, graphic design actually, and uh, just starting up in some photography. Where are you from? Uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Des Moines, Iowa. It's me. Next. Yeah, this person. Nick, you're up. Nick, 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 Nick. No, Nick. Next. Hey, Jared, this is uh, Steve Stanger from central New Jersey. Nope. We'll come back to you, Nick. Go ahead, Steve. <laughs> okay. Screw Sorry the Yankees, by the way. Yeah, actually, I, I'm over at my folks' place, so I had to find a quiet room. So to it's camp the at. Yankees' so room? There, this is the Yankees room, isn't it? That's exciting. Um, anyway, uh, I'm from Central New Jersey, uh, photographer, IT guy. Um, actually, uh, you were nice enough to actually feature one of my photos a couple of months ago on one of your uh, pics, and you even interviewed me via Skype. And uh, so it's cool to be talking to you live. Sounds good. Tracy, you're up. All right. Hey, I'm Tracy Coppage. I'm from Bristol, Virginia. And I am new into the world of photography and have been reading and scouring uh, fronosphoto.com for a couple of weeks and just uh, really trying to learn some new things. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, what's it say, Edward? Hi. Hello. All right, Edward. Hi. <laughs> We're moving. Uh, okay. Liam. Hi, I'm Edward. Oh, I'm Edward. <laughs> yeah. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Do do that. Okay. Hi, I'm Edward from the Philippines, and I started photography around January this year. And, well, I want to learn more. Sounds good. Liam? Um, from UK, and just starting in photography. And what were you dropping into that vial? <laughs> it's not a vial. No, what was it? Oh. <laughs> oh well. All right. So what I'll do is I'll open this up to everybody. Questions? You got questions? Raise your hand. I'll call on you, pick you, and then uh, go ahead and ask. Anybody want to start off first with a question? Anybody? Oh, there we go, Steve. Okay, you do a lot of photography um, with bands. I recently just had a chance to do a shoot with a single, uh, a singer-songwriter. The hardest thing to come up with was finding locations to shoot them in. The photographers he worked for before in his previous two CDs took them and stuck them in front of a wall. You know, I mean, that was, you know, let's stick them in front of a crumbling wall kind of thing. The hardest thing I came up, was coming up with was finding a setting. Right. And understandably, you know, if you have a band, which I've shot before and they have a type of music, it kind of leans. He's the person I was just shooting is a pop guy. And it was very difficult we ended up going to his hometown and just shot him 
around town, walking down the street. We did find some cool locations, but again, the hardest thing was not sticking them in front of a brick wall. Well, yeah, that's that's always the go-to thing is, hey, let's throw somebody in front of a wall. But, you know, what you just said, go to your hometown, go to his hometown, shoot pictures of that. But I would say listen to the music. Yeah. See if there's something in the music that actually, you know, grabs you and says, hey, wow, I heard something in it about an old beat-up 65 Mustang and we should go you know, in the back seat of that car and take some photos. Adam, I was going to call on you next. You've been, Adam's been in bands, toured, and is a photographer. So, Adam, give him some feedback on that. Yeah, uh, w Steve, one, one thing that always works when you're photographing musicians is getting them to loosen up. And um, if this guy, let's say, is a singer-songwriter who plays guitar, yes, then have him grab an acoustic guitar and find some locations. Go to the schoolyard go to a train tracks, go hang out on the street, go to a bunch of different places and just tell him to start playing. Maybe take a long lens, stand a little away from him and just shoot him kind of doing his thing, you know, where he's at his most comfortable. And then when he strikes, oh, Jared. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was just <laughs> going to say, get out there and let him play. Let him forget that you're actually there and just shoot. I mean, that's what these guys want. They just want to play music. Take him to a local uh, you know, if the guy's a singer songwriter, sit down at a bar, sit down at a coffee place, and just yep. let it rip. Just have fun, right? And and that's actually what we wound up doing. We were the town that he lives in. He does play at a local uh, coffee house, and quite honestly, those were the, to me those were the best shots because that's when he did. He's also he's a he's a bit of a character, so it was getting him not to play to the camera, which was the hardest thing. It wasn't that he was nervous. He was. I wanted him to. Be real, and, and actually, Adam's suggestion was perfect. I made him grab his guitar, at one point an acoustic, at another point an electric, and play. Yeah, sure. he wasn't plugged in, but just play because I was getting a lot of this from him. You know, a lot of the posing. Yeah, and, you, you'll yeah. get rid of that early. Um, yeah. Hey, Nobody Bill, wants to see that. Bill, you were shaking your head. Do you have anything you want to add into it? Unmute yourself, though. Yeah, I tried to do it, and it wouldn't. Uh, that's what exactly what I anywhere they're comfortable and uh -oh. let them forget that you're there and just start shooting them exactly exactly looks like we got joseph uh, just joined us joseph you got in here why don't you tell everybody where you're from from uh i'm from santa cruz california very nice santa my main cruz. thing is uh, street photography and uh candidates all right sounds good anybody have a question while we're here um we're going with the raise the hand method again Anybody? Anybody? Oh, hey, look. Hey, Bill, question. Um, going back through my collection, um, I used to tag horribly five, six words max. Um, I'm going back through based upon some of the things uh, you used to talk about. Lightroom is not cutting it anymore for tagging. Do you have anything out there that I can actually, you can suggest that... Um, I can go through the collection a whole lot faster and tag these photos. It's time consuming to the point where I really don't even want to do it now. Well, I'll just say that I am um, not a good tagger either. Um, I just kind of know where the photos are, I guess. I mean, I guess it would be better to be, to be able to search for X, Y, and Z and be able to come up with it. But Adam, have you used anything like Photo Mechanic at all? You know, that's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, a lot of folks... Um, tend to like to use photo mechanic because you can very quickly um, like rifle through just huge amounts of data um, you know the pre the previews are, are a lot quicker than let than Lightroom and well sure. and then that will go right into your metadata and then you can yeah you just retain your metadata and maybe export the XML or whatever it is and associate that associate that with the file and you should be okay all right sound good bill photo mechanic photo mechanic got it yeah um... Let's see. I'm just going to call on Tracy. Tracy, I'm putting you on the spot. Don't be scared. Don't be afraid. Do you, okay. have, any, do you have any quick questions? Um, I think the next thing for me is really um, going from the lens that came as default with my Nikon D5100 um, to the next step. Um, what do you recommend? Yeah, anybody that has watched other than Adam anybody have a recommendation before I get into one just raise your hand and I'll uh, call on you for a second lens 
Phil's pulling something out. That looks like a Sigma 17 to 50. 10 to 20. 10 to 20. What's the f-stop on that thing? Uh, 3.5 to uh, 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 5.6. Yeah, that's a that's a fast. I mean, not not uber duper fast in terms of um, life. Aspherical. Hmm. Aspherical. Yeah, no it's a, barrel. Yeah, no distortion. It's pretty good. Um, but let's see, Tracy, you have a basic kit lens. I'd assume an 18 to 55. Yes. What what body? Uh, the Nikon D5100. So you have a 5100, which is a great start. So there's there's some options that we've recommended quite a bit, and one has been a 35 1.8 because it's going to force you to move your feet and, and learn uh, how to compose your images better. Uh, it's also a 1.8, so it's going to let in a lot more light. Um, Nikon decided today to announce a 50 1.4, sorry, a 50, sorry, 40... 2.8 macro so if you do macro like flower type shots um if you're into portraits it would kind of be a, a good starting lens at 280 bucks to get you away from the kit lens with a better piece of glass to start with um if if i mean did you have a price you were looking a, a price range you wanted to stay in uh, probably um, no more than 300 right. for this first one. There you go. Just uh, pick up a 40 as soon as it comes out. I should ask that all the time. I think the 40 is going to be a very versatile lens. Adam, you agree with, I mean, 35 or the 40, I would say. One or the other oh, would The thing would about the 40 it. is that on a DX camera, you're going to be able to get a decent amount of, of bokeh. You're gonna, it's going to be decent for doing portraits. And you're going to have the added versatility of doing macro, of doing actual close-ups, which is huge. I mean, in the FX format, you can't touch a lens like that for that price. No, so and, I think it's going to be great. And I can't wait to, to get that lens and try it to see if it is going to. I mean, but for 280 bucks, it's a 2.8 lens, and it does what it does. Liam, you're getting called on. You ready, buddy? <laughs> yeah. Come on, ask me a question, Liam. Let's go. Stop rocking. Let's go. Let's go. Uh... I don't know what questions I've got. Really. What do you shoot with? Uh, um, at the moment, I'm shooting with film. All right. What do you have? What camera? I've got um, a Centon DF300 and what's that? Uh, a Nikon F601. Is that a 6006? 601. What's a 601? Let me see the front of that. It must be a European thing that they changed the names because it looks like a 6006. The other way, a little bit. Yeah, no, the the other side with the writing. Whoa. Yeah. I yeah, think it's a six thousand and six. It's a six thousand and six. That's what it looked like. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Are you enjoying shooting film? Um. Yeah, I've only just started shooting with film. I've shot one roll the other day. Have you and processed it yet to see what you've gotten? Um. Yeah. And and how are the results? Good. Um. I think they're okay. Um, I used an expired film as well. All right. All right. Well, if you get any questions, just raise your hand. So is so Liam? Like, are you really rich? No. <laughs> just because really. film is like crazy expensive to like shoot and process, particularly color. Um, are you shooting color or black and white? Um, I've got black and white and color films. I'm just really messing around at the moment. Well, you know, the one thing I can say to that is, you know, shooting film will help to inform anything you shoot digitally. If you haven't ever shot film, it's not a big deal. I mean, it's it's kind of an antiquated thing, but the results that you're going to get in film will definitely help to inform how you see things in digital and how you process. So that's that's awesome, man. Keep it up. Yeah, keep shooting, Edward. Edward, what's up? What do you got? Unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, I like taking candid shots. I'm sorry? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I like taking candid shots of people, especially at parties, weddings. Um, what's the best thing to do? Uh, you shoot the manual or shoot in aperture priority? Well, or... if, if you're shooting without a flash, aperture priority is probably going to be a better thing to start with, so you get a basic... Um, understanding of what the light looks like and then I tend to switch to manual especially if the lights are all the same and they're not changing if they are changing then you just have to you know start to anticipate when when it gets brighter what you need to do with your shutter speed or if it gets darker what you need to do with your shutter speed or aperture or ISO so it's all just getting you know familiarized with as the light changes how do you react to that happening 
But if you're using a flash, are you using a flash? Yeah, I do have one. Adam, hit him up with party information because you know how the flash is with me for parties. Yeah. Well, when you're when you're shooting flash, are you you're shooting uh, like uh, in a TTL mode or are you shooting like manually with it? Uh, manual. Yeah, I mean, look, that's fine. I mean, as long as you, you know, maybe take a few test shots and see what you get and just kind of go from there. I mean, the thing about party shots with an attached flash is that you've got to be fairly close to your subject for the light to look decent. Yep. You know, unless you have an, ex you know, an external flash that somebody else is holding for you, you just kind of get got to get right up with people. And, uh, you know, if you engage with your subject, I'm sure you can get some pretty nice uh, candidates that way. Okay, thank you. Good question, sure. good question, good answer. And Isaac, you got anything? Uh, yeah. Um, you had to find the mute just, button, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they need to start getting these. They need to probably have big buttons around the screen at some point. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just got a D7000 a couple weeks ago, and I'm really, uh, really loving it. I'm just wondering, uh, what would you suggest for beginner photos uh, to take photos of? Well, I mean, just whatever your passion tells you. It's what you enjoy going out and shooting. I mean, what what do you like doing for fun? Um, people skateboard. Paintball. People ride bikes. Did you say yeah, paintball? Skateboard. Paintball, skateboard. All right. Well, I would start with skateboarding. It's a little less dangerous to your camera unless you fall off the skateboard. But go to the yeah. skate park. You have friends that are already there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, you, so you now have an instant in with them, and you take pictures. They all want pictures of themselves to go on Facebook. They all want video of themselves to go where, on YouTube. So you're the guy that they're going to turn to and get the photos from. So it starts off with that. You know, that's your passion. You love skateboards. You love it. So you get out there. You shoot pictures. You do the best you can. You show them. They're going to love them because they're not always in always used to seeing pictures of themselves and then what happens over time is you make sure you watermark them when their friends put them up on YouTube or sorry on on Facebook then their friends start to see it then somebody's going to call you and say hey I don't have a skateboarding job for you to shoot but you know what I've got this party will you come out I'll give you 400 bucks to shoot it so it's just like one of these things you get out there you shoot what you love and it leads to the other things that are gonna start to pay you so you know, skateboarding. Go ahead. Shoot portraits out on there. Have the guys hold their skateboard. Shoot a portrait. Doesn't yeah. always have to be the action stuff. Just Isaac, are you shooting inside? Is it an indoor skateboard park or outdoor skate park? Uh, outdoor. Okay, yeah, cool. And don't be afraid, even if it's an outdoor skate park, to use the flash. You know, you can get some really cool low angles. Um, you can use the flash to kind of freeze the action. Um, if you've got you know wide angle or you can shoot really wide, you can get really super close. Hold the camera right, you know, at you know at the guys there. If you're doing video or or something, but just be careful. Don't get a fish eye and try to do it the whole time because that's what no. all the skateboard photographers do, and it's old and it's beat and it's yeah, it's over the top. But look, you're a skateboarder. You know when you look at a skateboard video or magazine, stuff that you think's cool. So try to photograph that kind of stuff, you know, stuff that's like edgy, that's like, wow, that's that's really cool, tell, that's dope. And like like I always say, tell the story. Set out to go out for, say, four hours during a, a day. You know, if somebody's going to be there for a long time, even if you just stayed there and there were people that you didn't know that were coming in, tell the story in photos of the people that are coming to the skate park. So there's a, you know, there's a six-year-old kid who skates. There's a... 29 year old guy who skates there's a 14 year old girl who skates go get a portrait of each one of them holding their board get an action shot of each one of them holding their board or uh, action shot of them doing what they do so just think of it like that there's there's a million things you can shoot focus in on things that may not be you know the normal guys going over the you know the grinding the railings focus in on say the wheels do a macro or a close-up shot of the wheels. Do a shot of somebody's beat-up chucks, you know? Do a, do a whole thing on who, what the shoes that they wear to skateboard in. I mean, there you go. You, you can do a portrait of them of them uh, with their board. You can then focus on the clothing that they wear. Do a close shot of just their feet on the skateboard. Uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of things. Anybody have anything else they want to add to this? Or does it just sound good? Bill? I do a lot of skateboard photography. Take business cards with you. If, even if they have your name on them, every time you shoot one of these kids, at the end of the day before they leave, hand them a card so they can come find their photo. I, Very important. I got one even better. 
that's good. Get stickers. We know that these kids love stickers, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? Skateboarders love putting stickers on their skateboard. So get a cool logo and get them to all put say, hey, I'll give you some free photos if you put this on the bottom of your skateboard. Or if you put, you know, whatever. You know, it's like a trade off. So that way these guys are gonna promote you and uh get a cool logo. There's you here. I'll, I'll throw this out there. I I don't use it, but ninety nine designs dot com is a place where you can crowdsource for getting logos. So you basically bid on people to make a logo, you could say, hey, I'm going to pay $75 for a logo. And what they do is they put it out there to all these graphic designers who then submit 20 different logos, and then you pick the one you like and work directly with them. Let me okay. call on uh, – is that good, Isaac? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Good. I think we gave you quite a bit of stuff to go work on, but that's what it's all about, Thinking, taking it back to the very basics – and finding what you enjoy and uh, and and making it work, Isaac, uh, Joseph. Sorry, Joseph. You got anything you want to ask? Actually, uh, my question is uh, um, post processing. Yeah. I think I'm overthinking it. I, I spend way too much time trying to you know edit it, and then I figure out it's a little too much, especially in the street photography scene. What What are you finding that you're overdoing? Well, I I've been using Silver uh, FX Pro two. Okay, so you have a plugin problem. It, I'm just going way overboard, and and I'm kind of realizing that I'm spending way too much time, and then I go into Photoshop and deal with it in there. All right, um, my suggestion right off the bat would be to stay away from the plugins for now. Just okay. Get to tweaking the files in Lightroom or Photoshop if that's what you're doing with the camera raw but just get to the basics work on your exposures work on your contrast work on the clarity uh work you know what on it the, is? the color think, ahead, of, think of it like this you know like if you're a musician and you were playing like this thing on on a guitar let's say you know you want to write that part you want it to be clean you want it to stand on the stone and, and be not strong. use the wah wah pedal then you want to see you know would that be cool with some delay maybe i want to add some reverb to it but until you really refine like your basic editing skills, you know, hold off on using those other tools to refine the photos. Like, there's nothing bad about learning them in conjunction, but make sure that on its own you're cool with that edit before you start dumping it else elsewhere. Sounds okay. good, Ed. So does that help, Joseph? Yeah, that helps. All right, yeah, just take it back to the basics again. Just, just think about making the picture look like the scene that it was in. And then, like Adam just said, take it to the next step after that. But get the basics down first, and then you can start tweaking and playing. It's kind of what we do with the raw edit each week. Um, we make extreme edits sometimes. Sometimes we do the very basic, basic edits. But then after after a while, we then tweak it and try something totally different. Any? Okay. Um, why don't we take um, one more? Anybody have anything they want to throw at us, or should we just wrap it up? I think we're good, Adam. Yeah. We got one more question Just over there. We do? Oh, okay. Edward. Edward. Just one more. Uh, one more question um, about ISO. Uh, if I bump up the ISO, I get grainy shots, right? Especially at night shots. Uh huh. Yep. Um, is that okay? Will that look good? Uh, I don't know. Well, here's the thing about grain. If you've ever... I've shot film, Adam shot film, I'm sure other people here have done it too. When you used to shoot 800 speed film, we got some grain. Um, grain wasn't always a big deal. Uh, I, don't, I don't think that every picture needs to be as smooth as possible. Um, but are you, what you can look for, I mean, don't be afraid of it. I wouldn't be afraid of it. Consider, you know, try getting the image right first and then worry about is it too grainy, not too grainy. Um, but I will say this. With all these people coming in and out, um, are you shooting landscapes? Are you shooting people? What are you shooting that that's coming out too grainy at night? Uh, people. So you're shooting people. Is it the party situations again? Uh, sometimes just uh, playing with my camera, taking pictures of friends. All right. Well, that's ways, it. Way, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Adam. Do you have a, you? You said you have a flash, right? Yeah. Yeah, man, don't be afraid to use that flash. Even if you're outside, even if you're doing candids, you know, if your camera doesn't have the high ISO capabilities, 
You know, if you use the flash well, it, it can look cool. It can look natural. It doesn't have to look like a snapshot, you know. So experiment with that. You know, you said you're ready in manual mode. Try different power settings and all that kind of stuff. You know, you'll, you'll probably find you'll get some cool stuff, and then you can, pump, you know, bring the ISOs back to a better level so it's not too grainy. Yeah, that's okay. definitely good. Thanks. All right, so um, this was fun. Everybody enjoy this? Yeah, we yep. got some head shaking. We got some bobbleheads going. So this was the second one that we've done. Uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun to have the you know conversation with everybody and, and nothing to be afraid of. You know, Just ask the questions, and we're all trying to learn and become better photographers as we go on. So everybody, thank you for joining us. I'm going to sign us all out. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.